Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are previewing game four which will happen tomorrow of the women's candidates final where Ting Lei will be white and Zhong Yi Tan will be black. Why are we doing this? Well the openings in this uh, event so far have been very interesting and it's clear that uh, both players have thought a lot about the strengths of the opponent and they've been trying to negate them. And this was uh, very true in the game where Ting Yi Lei was white and Zhong Yi Tan was black in the second round. Um, what was the whole point of Zhong Yi Tan's choice? Well, after d4, we had expected knight f6 to happen and then c4, e6, knight f3, d5 and then g3. And uh, Ting Yi Lei plays the Catalan quite often and we'd expected uh, certainly a Catalan to take place. Now, obviously, what Zhong Yi Tan did was uh, she thought about um, um, about this and thought, well, how can I try and get around a Catalan? And uh, what she did, she played 1d5 and after c4 played e6. And after knight f3, she played this very cunning move order, which I've played as a Queen's Gambit accepted player in the past, which is d take c4. From a Queen's Gambit accepted perspective, it's quite nice because you actually sidestep some of the sharpest white lines. So, for example, if D takes C4, then E4 is possible. And uh, that is something that Ting Yilei has done in the past. So you sidestep those. And, of course, with D takes C4, what you're doing is sidestepping um, the Catalan. Um, now, actually, one of the things that I hadn't quite realised um, until I read uh, Christoph Silecki's uh, recent book, um, uh, a Keep It Simple book, um, is that uh, G3, which I thought was an equivalent way of heading for a Catalan, um, is not actually very accurate. Because after D takes C4, Bishop G2, Black can play C5 straight away. And um, the fact that Black hasn't committed a knight to F6 makes a huge difference in all these lines. I'm just going to give you um, a little uh, tour of them just to, uh, uh, so that you can get a little feel for that. Uh, first of all, if Queen A4 check, very typical um, um, uh, Catalan move, aiming to get um, uh, the pawn back on C4. Black can play Queen D7, and the fact that White hasn't played Knight F3 means that the, um, the D4 pawn is, um, um, is undefended here. So, um, yeah, I mean, white plays queen d7, we go knight d7, and this is just fine for, um, for, uh, for black. I tried against Leela one node to, uh, to, to, to stir something up and got some sort of a way there, but, um, but actually it's just uh, dead equal, basically. So that's a very easy um, uh, save. It must also be said that bishop d7, queen c4, and now bishop c6 was the dragon's way of doing it, and that also looked pretty good as well. So um, queen a4, not at all a problem. Um, so actually the, um, the most natural move here um, is uh, to play the move knight f3. We'll just do it through a slightly different move order. c5, bishop g2. And now black plays knight c6. And you can see how early uh, black's getting pressure on this d4 pawn. And we also start to see what is the value of black's move order not having committed the knight to f6. Well, if you go knight e5, very common move in the Catalan, uh, black can simply play knight e7. And this is a key move in so many variations. The knight supports the other knight on c6, which really negates the power of this bishop along the long diagonal. And, uh, well, I mean, what can you do? If you uh, take on c4, I just take on d4, and then I'm going to play knight f5 and bishop e7, and just be happily a pawn up. Um, if you play knight takes c6, which is dragon against uh, um, against stockfish, just knight c6, and we're attacking the pawn on d4, and, you know, what do you want to do? Um, so, you know, this is very, very nice indeed for, um, um, for white. Um, what have you also got in this position? If you go castles, I just go c takes d4, queen a4, and now, um, for example, bishop d7, queen takes c4, and then e5, and... Uh, well, you know, uh, just because black hasn't you know, wasted a move on knight f6, black's managed to play all of these consolidating queenside moves and, uh, yeah, defend this sacrifice pawn on d4. And the rook's coming to c8 and, well, you know, it's, it's actually looking quite nice for, uh, for black. I mean, I tried uh, some things against uh, Leela 1 node, but I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, particularly happy, really. Um, I mean, I think e3, 
rook c8 and now queen b3 was what uh, the engines wanted but we just go bishop b7 takes takes and then knight f6 and castles black sacrifices is this b7 pawn back but just open lines everything you know white's definitely not better in fact probably white's uh, probably a teeny bit worse in actual fact so yeah the 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 ability to put you know this knight to to e7 is really important and the best line that the engines can find is queen a4 and now we've got a couple of ideas but if you just want to equalize straight away you just play c takes d4 bishop d7 is also uh, a possibility very reasonable for black but you play knight takes d4 queen takes d4 bishop c6 and then bishop d7 and you know in this line um if um, um, if you've gone knight f6 and then white's castled, then white always has this rook d1 idea in this variation. But of course, white hasn't castled yet, so there's actually very little for white to do. This has been played in uh, in a correspondence game and uh, yeah, other other games. And the engines just say this is totally equal. Takes takes a6, knight f6, rook d1, queen e7, rook d4, castles, rook d8. We're following a correspondence game here. Several uh, engine games they all ended in uh, in very easy draws for black. So what that means is that um, you know I was sort of thinking well you know um, uh, Tan has played. This cunning move order, knight f3 against um, um, knight f3, d takes c4 to avoid the Catalan. But surely you can just play the Catalan just with g3. No, it's not true. Because d takes c4, followed by a quick c5, knight c6, not having committed this knight on g8 yet, is actually good enough. So basically, it looks through this move order that uh, Zhongyi Tan has managed to take the Catalan out of the equation. And considering that was one of uh, Ting Yi Li's favourite openings uh, with white, that's pretty impressive, basically. So, um, yeah, you know, after knight f3, d takes c4, you know, what could white play? I mean, Lei could, of course, play knight c3, but it's not really what she's been uh, playing all the time. She might decide to do it, but, I mean, knight f3 is her move. But against d takes c4, what else could she do? Well, um, obviously there's e3, heading back into a queen's gambit accepted, you know, the uh, the main lines in actual fact. Now, Tingy Lei has played that uh, once. She's also played it as black, funnily enough, against Tan, and they had a draw in that. So, I don't know. I'm not sure. That might be a possibility. She might have some stuff ready, some stuff that, for example, she doesn't like as black and that she wants to try as white. Um, one of the, the ideas that you could play as well is queen a4 check. Now, this was... Uh, uh, the line that I spent a lot of time back in the 90s uh, analysing this. And actually what I discovered then has not changed very much in actual fact. Um, still thought to be perfectly reasonable for uh, for black. If um, knight d7 and then e4 we play the move c5. And um, the key point about this is that um, after bishop c4 we play c takes d4. And um, if knight takes d4 we play knight f6 hitting, hitting the pawn on e4. And after knight c3 we go bishop c5 hitting the uh, the knight on d4 and when you go knight b3 i go castles and um yeah this is just white's pieces are just not well placed this queen on a4 is all wrong now uh, if it's no longer pinning a knight on d7 then there's not much to it and actually uh, the queen's going to get hit with um with knight b6 um you know whether you and maybe you know playing the bishop on d6 first of all it's just a very nice position for black this and uh, well i knew this already a, a long time ago i mean white has played the the move castles there's been quite a few games with this but bishop c5 b4 bishop d6 and then you're just going to play a6 to threaten b5 play the knight out to e7 castles and uh, it should be quite reasonable i mean obviously you know this has moved on from um, i think you know i, I had uh, you know analysis up to about move 10 or 11 in uh, in my day it's moved on from there we've got uh, you know games going on till uh, you know uh, until move uh, 17 or 18 here but um, but still you know this is perfectly reasonable for black it's really just a very good line um, and after knight c3 um, the uh, the line that I, I prepared and it still seems to be pretty good is you go a6 and after e4 you go rook b8 threatening b5 so you have to take back with a queen and then we go b5 bishop b7 and then we're going to get in uh, c5 and knight f6 and um yeah i mean uh, when i prepared this uh, a long time ago I, I thought you know maybe were were these positions a, a little bit better for uh, for white somehow after knight d5 you know, i'm lagging a little bit with c5 but it doesn't seem like it after castles bishop e7 
which seems to be a novelty from uh, who was it was it uh, uh, from stockfish then uh, black's preparing to play c5 you stop the knight coming to g5 it should all be absolutely great for um, for black so you know this queen a4 is not uh, anything special really so um, e4 this is what uh, ting Ye Lei played and um, this is also quite uh, quite intriguing actually so in the game uh, game two uh, black played b5 we got a4 and then c6 and um, um, I mean I remember um, analyzing yeah you know lines where white plays b3 in actual fact so but if you go b3 we just throw in this little bishop uh, check here bishop d2 takes um, if you take back with a knight I go c3 so that's uh, followed by b4 so that's clearly not what you want and if you go queen d2 um yeah the engines want c takes b3 i seem to remember i was going to play knight f6 i seem to remember that um but c takes b3 takes knight f6 is what the engines want and well i mean all these queen side pawns are getting cleared out um at some stage you'll have to go e4 to e5 black will get a knight on d5 it's all perfectly fine for black there's just no danger at all here the engines weren't making very much of it. Um, a takes b5, surprisingly enough, followed by b3. That was uh, Stockfish's first choice, but um, I never thought this was uh, particularly dangerous, to be honest. Um, plenty of ideas here. Um, knight f6 is uh, what the engines uh, seem to want to play. And um, um, if b takes c4, bc4, bishop takes c4, knight e4, castles bishop b7 rook e1 knight f6 there's some slight yeah edge for white i mean you might be able to find some attacking ideas uh, in here but the engines basically feel that this is just uh, equal in fact so yeah probably need to analyze just a little bit further if you're going to play this as black but it doesn't look too scary so i mean i think that uh, tingy lay's choice knight c3 was pretty good but here there's quite an intriguing little moment here because um Tan played bishop b4, which is pretty aggressive. And I'm just wondering whether she played an aggressive line as black, really. Um, just knowing that she'd won the first game and hoping that Tingy Lei was, um, was a bit shocked or, um, you know, would, um, would find it hard to play a, a, a big, sharp game. Because um, all of the engines, um, you know, Stockfish and Dragon, they all want to play this move b4. Um, with the idea of, for example, uh, knight e2, that's Stockfish's choice. Bishop a6, bishop f4, knight f6, knight g3, and then c3 at some stage just to exchange everything off. Um, for example, this was a game of um, uh, dragons against stockfish. Played c3 immediately, takes bishop f1, bc3, queen b6, bishop b4, and then c5. And um, I mean, white's got definitely a small edge there, you know, because um, uh, just a little bit more um, more space there. But in actual fact, you know, if you analyze this very carefully with an engine, then you're going to find all the concrete ways all, you know, to, um, to, uh, to hold the draw. And yeah, I mean, this initiative of white's is just, you know, just disappearing very, very quickly. So that's actually quite intriguing because it makes you wonder you know with the situation in the match now one and a half each a draw for black would be a good idea if tingy lay repeated this would uh zhong yi tan play bishop b4 again or would she play b4 with some computer analysis and just work out uh you know a way to uh to a draw i mean yeah i mean uh, at first sight i mean there was nothing obvious no real obvious reason why black shouldn't be fine i mean knight b1 bishop a6 bishop g5 queen a5 was um um was dragon's way maybe more chances there for um for some uh, interesting play knight bd2 and then c3 was uh was stockfish's move and um yeah knight b3 queen b6 this this feels a little bit more a little bit more unclear maybe but still you know we, we were getting the kind of basic position again where you know the queen stopping the king from castling and then black's going to play knight d7 and get in c5 somehow and uh well you know then we're just uh you know going to be looking again at, a, at an equalized position so yeah not sure not sure i think that's definitely one of the things that um that tingy Lei has to ponder in this position um, I mean, Bishop B4 actually worked out pretty well for uh, for Zhong Yi Tan. I mean, uh, uh, Tingy Lei played that, these positions very, very well and um, and won the game in the end. But I think that you know Zhong Yi Tan can probably claim that uh, from an opening assessment point of view, um, it, the opening was a success. Um, I mean, Bishop D2, Queen B6, 
black seem to be all right all the way really uh, in this position so i mean i think if tingy lay is looking to uh, to improve this line then um, bishop e2 is um, is uh, maybe quite interesting here um, just uh, preparing to castle quickly um, for example i mean uh, a6 we go castles bishop b7 um, yeah after knight f6 we were getting something quite interesting takes 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 c takes b5 and then this move knight g5 h6 e5 takes 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 f4 which um the engine said was uh, was equal but well i mean uh, it's a mess right so uh, some good preparation on here with white you could probably cause black some um uh, some uh, some worries um bishop b7 um what else did we uh, what what else did we uh, did we have in here there was uh, bishop d2 was played by um i think this was uh, stockfish against dragon and after knight e7 playing b3 very similar to what um tingy lay played um uh, in the game and uh yeah again you know this is uh, not a bad position i mean the, this bishop is awkward with a knight on e7 and uh, you know you've got some sort of clamp on the queen side uh, this was actually uh, following a game uh, andryoshenko against evtushenko and uh, um, a correspondence game email game um, and now instead of uh, knight takes b5 which uh, liquidated everything um yeah bishop g5 was uh, what the engines were playing and then this very unusual idea knight a4 just exploiting the fact that the bishop on b7 is gone and then knight d7 knight c5 and you know although the engines didn't think this was better i do have to say that you know with these two offside bishops b7 and a5 and uh, you know some pressure some outposts on d6 for example ah this looked quite pleasant really you know they, they were the engines were playing the the good old standard push here i think this could be uh, quite difficult for black to handle but uh, so a move like bishop e2 i definitely think could be a, an interesting way of playing um the only uh, question is is whether um yeah whether um tingy lei has got anything against this move b4 and you know whether jongi tan wants to uh, to play that um so that is actually quite intriguing um yeah i mean um i'd say that uh, that would you know those sort of lines seem like the most interesting if uh, tingy lei wants to carry on with that otherwise you know you could play e3 or you could play as um as uh, somebody suggested in the youtube comments playing knight c3 that's not tingy lay's normal way of playing because he wants to play catalans with g3 but if she feels that uh, a catalan is not going to be possible then uh, and she doesn't want to face um this particular line of the queen's gambit accepted maybe wants to uh to um um yeah you know just to uh to change things up a little bit for a second white game then this might be an idea the question is what would jongi tan play uh, play there um i'm sort of expecting her to play probably the queen's gambit declined with e takes d5 which has been very popular recently a possible curveball might be knight takes d5 because i think that jongi tan has played that and it's definitely been very popular on chinese circles um it's a semi tarash but where yeah you know white hasn't committed the knight to f3 it was always traditionally meant to be slightly less good for black because after c5 you can play this move rook b1 and stop black from playing c takes d4 and bishop b4 um and if black wants to try and achieve that then you go um you've got to play the knight to c6 which is not always what black wants to do black uh, all the modern systems are to to play bishop b4 check swap off the bishops and then play the knight to d7 and the uh, and b6 and bishop b7 vladimir kramnik's played a lot of games with that making lots of draws but here after knight c6 actually you can play bishop b5 uh once again to stop bishop b4 you can do a lot of interesting things there you know to um uh to stop that I, I did a lot of analysis i thought yeah i had an outside chance once of um uh i thought that peter schwidler might do this against me i'd seen a couple of games uh, uh from him so uh, i prepared this quite uh, quite thoroughly also maybe vladimir kramnik as well i think it was uh tournament in 2013 or 2012 uh, london classic um and uh in the end i got a nimzo against uh, vladimir kramnik and a grunfeld against peter schwidler so i never used this but i spent a lot of time analyzing this and found a lot of interesting things so um but yeah i would expect that basically um and not impossible that it happens tomorrow i mean otherwise tingy lei can play at one e4 but then i'm pretty sure that zhong yi tan will uh will trot out um, um a berlin uh against this case so that you know well again not not fantastic uh, chances for a win unless you've got something good 
Um, the only uh, interesting curveball could be uh, bishop c4. And then, um, as we said in the preview, Zhong Yitan's been playing knight f6. Knight g5 has been uh, one of Tingyi Lei's uh, choices there. So, yeah, two knights, very sharp uh, games, very interesting games. That could be interesting, of course. But, um, yeah, my money's probably on, um, on 1d4. And, yeah, you know, either... Uh, a bit more of a push on this uh, three knight f3 4 e4 line or maybe uh, two knights three knight c3 you know and uh, and playing uh, you know some sort of queen's gambit decline there you know i think that could be uh, could be quite possible whatever i'm i'm very very interested to see this tomorrow and uh, well hopefully join me on mastodon to watch this game as it unfolds you know I, this is a it's a very nice quality match um quite tense of course quite nervy because of uh, everything that's at stake, you know, a chance to play the World Championship and just a short match, of course, six games. And, um, you know, with the possibility of tie breaks to come. I think it's going to be a thriller. It's going to go to the wire and uh, I think both players are going to have their chances. So, um, yeah, you know, hopefully join me on Mastodon tomorrow and uh, we can take a look at it together. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, why not give a like, subscribe, take a look at my uh, new book, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, or my chessable course as well. And otherwise, you know, keep uh, keep your eyes peeled on this channel. If you enjoy this match, if you enjoy this chess, then uh, I'm going to try and cover all of the games in the match um, uh, on this channel. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks for watching.